There are very contending views. For example, Dr. Haley Kissinger argues that uh, as a result of the pandemic, there could be revival of the new medieval age, you know, world cities arising, seeking protectionism, nationalism, and etc., uh, thereby debunking the process of globalization. But some others, like uh, Professor Joseph Nye at Harvard, argues that the uh, you know, pandemic won't change the national order. When pandemic is arrested and gets stabilized, then international order will return to normalcy. Okay, then there will be a pattern of competition between China and the United States. But my personal guess is that when dust settles, okay. then old order will continue. The old order will be the sharp competition between China and the United States. Maybe the competition could be much worsened. Therefore, I would say that worsen the status quo after the coronavirus. Before coronavirus, we thought about the national security in terms of military security and economic security. We rarely talked about human security, biological security, or ecological security. But I think that this sudden outbreak of COVID-19 changed our way of thinking about national security in such a way that the human security Biological security can be more important than military security and economic security. Another important aspect is what? In the past, we have thought about security in terms of a national security. However, the current spread in the pandemic showed that the national security concept alone cannot solve the problem. We got to think about in terms of global security. A lot of countries now talking about protectionism isolationism, you know, lockdown, blockade, and all these kinds of things. But that won't solve the problem. There is no guarantee that individual country, no matter how hard that country works, cannot assure its own security. After all, we are all interconnected. Government has been extremely you know, wise in adopting strategies. For example, without, you know, for example, without adopting lockdown, maintain openness, transparency, but on the other hand, show the utmost form of prudence and alertness in dealing with coronavirus. If I would say that you know, our government has shown you know, enormous technical management capability in dealing with you know, uh, current pandemic, of course, we have learned from MERS situation, SARS situation. Therefore, our this disease control community and epidemiological in the community had accumulated a really large number of experiences and techniques in dealing with it. I would say that that made a really big difference. But again, another one is what the devotion and sacrifice of medical doctors, nurses, and other kinds of public health related you know, people. They have been working really damn hard, but they have not making any complaints. Right. And I think that is a perfect example of good you know, medical profession. And we are very lucky to have that kinds of uh, medical you know, people. And Korean people have shown enormous civic mind, okay? We had really communitarian spirit, okay? When government says, wear a mask, everybody was wearing mask, okay? Keep, make a social distance, and citizens were following with that social distance. That is a ma another important you know, difference. But I think the most important thing, in a, in a sense, is institutions. Mm -hmm. We have created you know, enormous institutional capacity. For example, with universal coverage of medical care, okay? extremely easy access to medical facilities, very low cost medical services. Okay? That made an important point. But finally, I should say that President Moon Jae-in did an excellent job. Therefore, in, this, in a sense, then Korean case becomes exceptional because it come up with a really interesting combination of a lot of positive factors. Okay, maybe you know fortune might have played a role here. And I would say that since the founding of the nation five thousand years, Dangun period, I think the South Korea has, Korea has become most successful in terms of attracting world attention.
you know, enhancing its soft power. You know, China bashing has become very, very common trend in the U.S. and West Europe. And China bashing has led to the so-called new battle line between the West and East. On the one hand, we are struggling with this pandemic, coronavirus. But on the other hand, all major countries now engaging in nuclear arms race. Recently, you know, editor-in-chief of Global Times of China uh, argued that the China should have more than 1,000 nuclear bombs. We only have 260 bombs. Given the intensity of hostility coming from the United States, we should have more than 1,000 nuclear bombs. Well, that's a really stupid, okay? And self, you know, suicidal. We should really get away from this kinds of lunatic way of handling international politics. Now, if current pattern of a nuclear arms race continues, then when the corona pandemic is over, the nuclear waste will come from the forefront. We should avoid, okay, at any cost. You know, it's not desirable. For President Moon, uh, North-South Korean relations are a constant variable. On the occasion of second anniversary of uh, April 27 Panmunjom Declaration, he also proposed that there is a need for inter-Korean public health cooperation. And he wanted to, you know, uh, extend an assistance to North Korea in dealing with uh, COVID-19. Therefore, he has been emphasizing, you know, the importance of inter-Korean exchange and cooperation all along. And he even said, okay, even within existing United Nations Security Council sanctioned regimes, you know, he will find out some niches so that we can do cooperation with North Korea. Therefore, we have a plenty of room for mutual cooperation. Now, it is time for North Korea, North Korea to respond to President Moon's, you know, this positive signal. But so far, there have been no signal coming from Pyongyang.